With this second generation 208 Super Mini here usefully improved, Peugeot has brought us a small car that really pushes the boundaries in Super Mini design. This 208 model's engineering may not quite be unique, but all the feel-good stuff really is the pavement presence and the avant-garde cabin. Plus, that's been delivered with most of the practicality and efficiency you'll need from a small hatch. Here's a car that's made other brands in this sector really sit up and take notice. And we think, what a few buyers who'd never normally choose a Peugeot of this class are going to do the same. Nothing fundamental has been done to change the way the improved version of this second generation 208 drives, partly because few changes were needed and partly because the brand's engineers were otherwise engaged in perfecting the installation of the two fresh electrified powertrains which have been introduced with the enhanced version of this model. We'll get to them uh, after pointing out that your chosen 208 doesn't have to be electrified. Well, not for the time being anyway. Uh, in the short term, uh, quite a large proportion of the sales of this little Peugeot are going to continue to be of versions with the car's conventional PureTech petrol unit. Uh, this is offered now in either normally aspirated 75 horsepower form with 5-speed manual transmission or in 100 horsepower turbocharged guys with six manual speeds. If you want an auto, then you'll be directed to the hybrid powertrain that we mentioned earlier on, uh, which uses a six-speed dual-clutch automatic. Uh, built into that transmission's casing is a DC inverter, an engine control unit too, and most significantly, a little 28-horsepower electric motor that's powered by a tiny battery which is secreted under the front passenger seat. On the move, this motor can work together with the hybrid model's 1.2-litre petrol engine or separately from it. And unlike with the mild hybrid systems, which are fitted to, say, a Hyundai i20, uh, here the car can be driven for short urban distances under 18 miles an hour on electric power alone. During deceleration, the petrol engine stops and the e-motor acts as a generator to recharge the hybrid system's 48 volt battery. Uh, the battery also stores uh, the energy that's recuperated by the regenerative braking system. As a result, the 208 hybrids, uh, they return around 65 miles per gallon and around 97 grams per kilometer of CO2. Enough with the combustion models though, as we mentioned earlier on, there is another power plant that we have to talk about here, the E208 model's full battery powered setup. Now here, a 50 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery is mated to a 100 kilowatt electric motor, putting out 136 bhp and working through the usual uh, single speed automatic transmission that you get with all EVs. Uh, like all EVs too, this one develops all its torque at once. Uh, there's two 260 newton meters of it and the car simply hurls itself away from rest. It takes uh, just a couple of seconds to get to 30 miles an hour and 62 is reached in only 8.1 seconds and that disguises the fact that also like all EVs uh, that zero emissions variant has a bit of a weight problem. Uh, the drivetrain adds over 300 kilos of bulk that does inevitably rather restrict the driving range, which is limited to a best of 225 miles or just 218 miles in the GT trimmed version. If you want to do better than that, then the top GT version can also be ordered with the brand's more up-to-date 51 kilowatt hour powertrain. Now that's paired with a gutsier 156 horsepower motor and that claims a total range of up to 248 miles. With any E208, a 20 to 80% DC charge is estimated to take less than 25 minutes when you're using a 100 kilowatt public charger. When you're AC charging at home, uh, you'll be needing four hours and 40 minutes when you're using a 7.4 kilowatt charger. Peugeot has quite a history in small hatches stretching back to the 104 of 1976 but perhaps more pertinently in terms of B-segment super is the 205 of 1983. 
In the three decades following the launch of that trend-setting model, the brand accumulated millions of sales in this segment without ever delivering anything that was uh, really particularly memorable until the original version of this second generation 208 arrived in 2019, that is, bringing a level of pavement presence that no other small hatch could quite match. That visual persona didn't need much changing as part of this midterm update, just a few tweaks to bring the look of this Super Mini into line with some of Peugeot's more recent designs. You'd hardly notice any of these from here at the side unless you happen to be familiar with this updated model's brighter palette of available colours or with its different wheel designs. Uh, they're still based around rims of either 16 inches or as in this case 17 inches in size and all with this neat four-spoke centre cap that conceals the wheel bolts. As before, this rather curious recessed indentation on the squared off C-pillar there is a stylistic nod to the old 205, but of course, this 208 is a much larger piece of design with its wide wings and its curvier body. Also, as before, there's a subtly different look if you're able to stretch up to top GT trim, which gets you glossy black finishing for the roof and for the wheel arch flares. The front end has always been the most arresting part of this second generation 208 design and it still is, although it's now been updated in line with the rather arresting front end signature first seen on the brand's 9x8 hypercar. Uh, this sees a bigger grille with the brand's latest logo and body colouring that uh, better integrates this appendage uh, into the front end. There are now these uh, separated corner panels, each with three long vertical called light claws. It's all still quite striking as a result. Um, if you want this to await, uh, it'll be because you think it looks like nothing else on the road and you'd be absolutely right. The rear light signature is different too now uh, with three individual red claws arranged horizontally. Uh, they comprise of three rather elegant lines of LEDs which are separated by a black strip around the boot lid. Of course, what's more significant is what you can't see, the CMP or Common Modular Platform Chassis, which is impressively light. An entry-level version of this 208 uh, tips the scales at only just over a tonne Right, time to take a look inside. Certainly has a very futuristic feel and one of very high perceived quality thanks to this two-tier fascia layout with its smart carbon trimmed concave inner section that curls around the edge of the cabin and on into the doors. Not too many interior changes uh, have been made as part of this mid-term update and that means that as usual with this brand, uh, this cabin champions Peugeot's unique so-called i-cockpit format where you view the instrument binnacle uh, over the upper rim of a tiny steering wheel rather than uh, conventionally through the wheel spokes. Provided you avoid base trim, that binnacle display will feature a now improved 10 inch screen upgraded to clever 3D status with top GT spec. All 208s now get a central infotainment monitor of 10 inches in size, but you'll have to avoid base trim if you want it like this in high definition form fitted with Peugeot's latest uh, iConnect infotainment system generation. Um, either way, the monitor is necessary to operate all the climate functions. Uh, that means switching out of uh, whatever you happen to be looking at every time Time you want to change the temperature or the fan speed. At least these seven piano style keys below this monitor look rather nice. They're positioned in front of a row of touch sensitive shortcut buttons just behind. Uh, these seats are reasonably comfortable. There's not much wrong with the ergonomics generally. Uh, there's a reasonable amount of cabin storage space and there are plenty of media connectivity points. Plus this neat lidded uh, center stack compartment can now include a much more powerful 15 watt wireless phone charging mat on the better spec models. So time to take a look at the rear seat. Once inside, it's actually not too bad, uh, provided you don't mind the fact that as usual on a Stellantis small hatch, the head restraints provided are of the sort that uncomfortably dig into your back until they're raised. 
Overall, larger adults probably wouldn't want to be spending too long back here, but does that matter given that for the majority of buyers, these rear seats will only be used occasionally for those above school age? Only you can decide that, I suppose. Finally, let's take a look uh, in the boot, which is 311 litres in size, uh, regardless of whether you choose a combustion or full EV drivetrain. It is quite a usable, squarely sized space with 674 millimetres of length and 1,018 mils of width between the wheel arches. As usual in this class, there's no seat folding cleverness so this second generation 208 has evolved but not beyond recognition prior to this second generation 208's original arrival super minis uh, tended to sell on either quality or value but this peugeot opened up another way in which you might prioritize your choice of small hatch offering a design-led appeal that continues to offer something refreshingly different in the class if you're the kind of person who appreciates that sort of thing, then nothing else in this segment will satisfy you in quite the same way. Most people are gonna recognize that in this improved 208, Peugeot has perfected for us the super mini it was always capable of. A smart, small car choice in more ways than one.